Last week on The Truth, the Primo's team loaded up and headed out. Elk Camp, New Mexico. Elk, 2020. 2020. The whole crew's in camp this week, including Jimmy, who was trying for his very first archery elk kill. It's good to be here. Jimmy, one time before you came out here both, both yeah, season yeah. with us. And yeah, I didn't get to hunt. I just came to be a, have fun. It's just good to have Jimmy. We got the whole crew here, and it's yeah. maybe the first time that we've ever all been together during both season, you know. Brad kicked off the season first, so he and Lake could head to Arizona later in the week. We spotted a big bull all by his lonesome. and called him in from what was at least a half mile away. Just to watch that show, and look at this setting. I mean, y'all, that's what a, what a great time, Jack. Thank you so much. Always, Lake and Jordan just, and I had a ball today. We took it easy, we just, you just don't never know it can change that quick. comes to packing out elk. Brad, Wilbur, Lake, and Jordan. Brad killed a bull yesterday, and um, to allow them to keep hunting and to keep doing what they're doing uh, as we take turns doing this, um, where they killed the bull, they needed to pack him out. So they left him, hung him in a tree, quartered him up, and we're going to get him. No, nobody really uh, said anything. We just knew what we had to do. And it was, you guys keep hunting, and we'll go get your elk. So we left him overnight hanging up here. It was probably 38 degrees here last night, so he should be fine. Yeah, I mean, this is the business end of killing elk right here. Come on. We found all the meat, and we're gonna have to do this very stealthily because there's bulls bugling right here. Brad and them are coming around this side, so we're gonna gather up all the meat. Put it in our backpacks. We need back up the hill and get out of here. The big herd of elk, y'all saw him earlier. Right when we got there to get the meat. Over the next, on the next big finger ridge over there. Went to get the last bit of meat and the guys come by and waved and they're headed over there now. Hey, look right here. We was talking about it on the way out. The last, well, I've been coming here 15 years. Troy and Brad have been coming here almost 20. They were the first ones here. We got to talking about it. All the elk through the years, that all the hunts and experiences that we've had here. Man, when you, when you don't get to come for several years like I have, and you go by places you think about where you had a hunt, man, it just, so many memories start coming back. I miss being up here in the high country, man. Miss my hanging out, it's fun. Yeah. We're only on day two and I'm having a ball, man. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to come up here. How's that thing? How come I'm sweating? Yeah. Cause I'm old. Over the years, we've packed a lot of elk out of here. And as we've gotten older, we've tend to have gotten a little smarter. And if it wouldn't be for this Polaris Ranger, it's a long, long walk to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Right the last elk I packed out of here, and we didn't have backpacks like that, pack frames, and we were carrying hindquarters on our shoulders like that, and it was pouring down rain and lightning was striking everywhere. <laughs> and I kept thinking, well, if they find me, when lightning strikes me and they find me, they ain't gonna be able to tell the difference between the elk meat and me. We'll both be cooked. <laughs> The all-new Broadhead, the most accurate archery range finder on the planet, with unheard of accuracy to plus or minus 0.3 yards, not to 150 yards. 
Fusion with revolutionary full-spectrum ranging technology. It delivers lethal precision regardless of target, lighting, or reflectivity for an unmatched advantage in the field. The all-new Broadhead from Bushnell. Tested. Proven. Accurate. Any hunt. Any range. Go farther with Federal Premium Terminal Ascent. Match accuracy at extreme range. Bonded construction for deep, straight line penetration. Consistent expansion where other bullets fail. It all comes together in the best hunting rifle round ever made, period. Federal Premium Terminal Ascent. No limits. For more than 125 years, Savage has embodied the American spirit through a legacy of accuracy and unwavering dependability. We've defined an industry and continue to shape its future. Savage is for those who never settle. Authentic, true, and American strong. We are Savage. As I said earlier, Brad and Lake are heading to Arizona in a few days. So we're trying to get Lake a bull before they leave. Can't hold and they, they won't even let y'all ride up front? We're the young boys. We know our role. We gotta let the yeah. senior citizens sit up front. Young bucks in the back. <laughs> it's rougher back there. They, they tougher. We gotta have that easy ride in back. All right, man. Y'all be careful. Good luck. Okay, we'll see y'all. This one's got a heater. Over the next few days, we get after it hanging with the herds all day long, just trying to get in the right spot at the right time. The thing about elk hunting that is most important is working with the wind and keeping it in your favor. That means being patient. There he is, walking. Now he's walking our direction. You see him? And a lot of times, hiking the long way around to get that wind. The way he was coming, he would have, if he wouldn't have locked up, he'd have popped up right there. But it's all part of the challenge, and that's why we love it. <coughs> we have a few encounters with some young satellite bulls, but the big boys, well, they just don't want to cooperate with us. But on the third day... <coughs> the wind finally allows us to get in close. This bull and his cows run right in on top of Lake. And he just can't get his bow drawn in time. I didn't know what else to do. That guy, that guy real. Sheesh. The next morning, we're back at it. It's Lake's last day to hunt. So, of course, we're trying to get him on one. I think we're gonna go ahead at this point, kind of find a good setup and just you know, semi set up and call for maybe 10 minutes and see if we hear him. We finally get a bull coming in, but it just doesn't work out for us. The most important thing in elk hunting with a bow is just don't force it. Enjoy your time in the beautiful West. And if it ain't meant to be, it ain't meant to be. Better luck next year, Lakey. We got, how many days, we, we got, me and you got to leave for Arizona and... We got a full day tomorrow hunting here, and then they're going, they're going, when they're scouting today, the guys we're hunting with, and in the morning, and we'll talk to them in the morning and kind of get a plan. That's cool, man. Uh, I can't wait to see what it looks like on the camera. You know what's fun with a bow? It's one of the oldest weapons in the world, and every year we are expected to build a better one. This year's product is to strive to get even more balanced than we've ever had before. The sight, the stabilizer, the quiver, we're looking at how that all melds together into a package that feels ergonomically like one unit. And this is where the V3X has really come in strong. One arrow says it's super straight. Another is extreme straight, whatever that means. So, what's true? Every arrow comes straight out of the box, but only one stays straight in the truck. 
through the air, out the rib cage, and into the dirt. Shot after shot. That's Gold Tip Straight. Start tough, stay true. Some blinds are built for the tough stuff. Some, not so much. Double bull blinds are field tested to be more reliable, more durable, and more adaptable with more ways to make you invisible. And the warranty? That's a lifetime thing too. All of which make the double bull difference undeniable. Double bull, be unstoppable. Well, we're getting all our stuff packed. About to head to Arizona. Hey, I didn't get to shoot a bull, but we had a fun couple days hunting and it's just bees that way sometimes. Jordan's hunting now. He's out there shooting and getting ready and everything. I guess we're about to head out. Well, guys, I sure enjoyed being with y'all. But wasn't Brad's hunting magical? Oh, God. Yeah. We're sitting there listening to you. There's no way that elk could turn around and come. He oh. did it. He did <laughs> it. He, he found, he found, that, he found first... that one elk at the right time yeah. with the right yeah. call. When we so first saw him, he was a little bit tan dot. He just kept getting bigger and bigger. And we're like, oh, and okay, he's going to come. Yeah, he got he's going to come. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets fast as Jimmy. He was too far for Brad to shoot. He comes straight to me and Lake. Yeah. And he smelled where we walked. Yeah. And turned and boogered and turned around and went 22 yards well, from Brad. I, you know, I can smell that lake from here, so I, I don't doubt that. Yeah, I don't doubt that wind. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> there was man, there was one tree with a strip of shade, and me and Will were huddled, huddled just sitting there watching the elk, like, oh, and I was filming over Will's shoulder, like, ah, oh, this could, this might not work, and then, whoop. You turn around, that, that, that was meant to be. It was that lucky. was great. But, you know, that, that was a lucky deal. We pulled that off, but I hope my luck don't run out because I've waited 23 years for an Arizona Unit 9 tag, and I drew it through a WTA tag application this year, and that's where Lake and I are headed right now. Mm -hmm. well, you <laughs> are, he, he, he is one lucky guy, because I don't know how many years ago it was, he walked into my office, and he goes, well, we drew a sheep tag. I said, who drew a sheep tag? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I did. I said, okay, so we're going sheep hunting. And I didn't know how to run the camera, Lake. It was, it was, <laughs> it was hilarious. Yes, but sir. I got it done. I, I got that Montana bighorn sheep, man. It was above my desk, right? Boone and Crockett, Montana bighorn sheep. Only non residents draw that year. I'm kind of sad leaving you guys, though. I mean, this is always a fun fun time of year. It is. And look, we even got the, the gunman himself bow hunting this year. And I have. I, I'm having some fun, I tell yeah. you. I still got it in me, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> look, I hope when I'm 74, I get around these hills like you do. Uh, I hope so. I hope you do, too. Yeah, he's 73. Nice. He'll be 74 March 13th. Well, that's close enough. He's over the, he's over the six I'm over the hill. Over the hill. <laughs> All right, y'all right, be good. good Travel luck. safely. Good All right, y'all too. Good luck. Good luck to y'all. Good luck to you. Don't shoot <laughs> this one. I'm the chef on the brand. Please, you're on the chef. Hey, love being with you. Yes, sir. Love being with you. Y'all be good. Yes, yes, sir. We got to head up the mountain. All right. All right, T-Roy. George, right. up back. Right. We were looking at the elk from right over here. We were not ready. I needed to get a sharpie and put some camo on there for you. <laughs> we were sitting over there, what, 
a mile and a half probably. Right. Watched a bull. Couldn't really tell how big he is, but it looked like a shooter going up though. And we estimated and, he was like five or six miles from us. Yeah, I mean, that's another good ways over there going up a draw. I think it's two draws down from where we're at right now. So I think we just get By up himself. On, get up on the edge and of the timber. Looked, he looked like he had a good rack. Yeah, get up on the edge of the timber and work our way down through there. We may run into another one on the way. So let's take it easy and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Old Jimbo is now the odd man out. So he's back at camp relaxing while Troy, Slade, and myself set out to try and find the bull we saw crossing the prairie for old big country. But us old folks, well, we just have to stop now and then and take a break to stretch out and possibly catch a nap. I break in half. But while we're sitting here on pause for a few minutes, out of nowhere, we get a surprise. Did you hear an elk? Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear Was that an elk? I think so. I thought that was what was stumping. I swear that was an elk bugle. Where's your one? That way. Where, where was it? That way, wasn't it? Yeah. That way. Let's get our stuff. We heard a bull bugle, so now we're in setup mode. Jordan and Troy are in a perfect spot, right where this deep draw narrows down as it comes up the mountain. Kind of like hunting a pinch point for whitetails. Slade and I hurry above and behind them and start calling. Here we go. I hear something walking, Troy. I'm behind a big rock formation, about 150 yards up the hill behind Jordan. I always try to have something between myself and the bull as he comes to the call. So he has to look hard to find the source of those calls. I think I hear footsteps. something I see him. There it comes. Coming right at me, Troy. You got him? You don't measure that in feet. You don't, I mean, you don't measure that in yards. He was like six feet. I thought he was gonna walk right to you. <laughs> Thank gosh. 
I decided to beat him behind this tree and rather in front of it. You did good, buddy. Good job. <laughs> Dude, I feel so bad for late. He's hunted his butt off for four days. And I've hunted my butt off for about three hours. <laughs> Awesome job, buddy. Good job. A mouth is the slate, I said. He's right on top of it. Hey! And then everything got real quiet. I didn't say that. Hey, look right there behind you. Found a shed, too. <laughs> and then, then, I mean, it got real quiet, and all of a sudden, I heard. And I went. You know where he was standing at? Where? Right there by that rock. <laughs> right there? Right there. Holy crap. No wonder the thought was so bad. <laughs> Holy smoke. Right here. You can see where he's spinning out. <laughs> I saw him run right through there. Yeah, I, th I, th I think he t tipped over last time I saw him up there. He, 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 he was running and I started bugling real loud and carrying yeah. and started walking. Yeah. And as far as I know, he's right there. <laughs> We might better be talking so loud. <laughs> How far is that, Wilbur? Like five yards? I don't know, man. Oh, uh, one. That's big stick, too. Not even three yards. No. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Yeah, so. he, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't two and a half yards. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey. He was coming up that bottom right there. I didn't know if he was going to come through here right here. I was just sitting there going. But I wouldn't be able to have done that if it wasn't for this tree in front no of me. That's I a great setup. I drew back from him like 15 yards. That's a great setup. Yeah. He, he looked like a big frame. Plenty big enough for me. I don't know what, I don't, he might be a. We did it. He might be a three by three. I don't know, he's plenty he, big though. He, he could be a monster five by six because I saw big fish tails. Yeah. But the, I, think, I think there were five, it was the five. I don't, I don't know where it is. He's dark horned and heavy. <laughs> That's the one we saw across that dead game. It, it is. Prairie this morning. It's the only elk in here yeah. that we know of. You know what? Hunting these elk in the timber is a lot like hunting turkeys. It's a little bit more fun. <laughs> Just come straight at you. Straight at me. I drew my bow when he was coming right at me. I'm like, I'm going to either not shoot him or... We were debating at one point whether he's going to come in between me and Troy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but he took a right. <laughs> that is a big, mature old bull. He's been around a minute, ain't he? he what ahead. a great time. Well, I could hear him down here walking down the hill, so I bugled at him. So I decided, okay, I'm going to get right behind you so that he'll come on up this way. But when you And then said, you bugled. And that's when he really... He came around. He said, well, uh, you and Mike, you're too close. And then you picked up behind me and worked out perfect. The cow calls and the bugles. It's it, it just, when you can work as a team, you know, mm -hmm. ah, it was like, it was great. I think this may be the same elk we watched come across that period first thing I, in the I morning. promise you it is. And he got up in here and we got a boat. That's the side that I could see at five, six miles on the night. I, when he, he hit the sun just right, mm -hmm. the light just right, I could see. He's got a nice frame. Well, you know, we let him get up in here and we got above him because of the wind and we just hung out for a while and he finally bugled. We, th we thought we were here in distance of him. And, you know, that middle of the day, he'd been resting up for a couple of hours probably. And, you know, a he, lot of times, just being calm and having patience to let them do their thing and not trying to force them to do it mm -hmm. works wonders. It did have, you, have you ever seen me try to force it? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate I'm proud being of, here. I got to say a quick blessing. Yes, I got to thank the man upstairs. Do it. Dear Lord. I keep saying it every year, you let us come back, you, you give us health and, and thank you for creating the elk for us to enjoy and to chase. Thank you for the, the cleansing that it seems to give us each fall after a busy year. And we come back and we have one focus and that's to try to match wits and win a battle with a big elk like this. When we leave here, Lord, carry us all home safely. In Christ's name, come in. Thank you, Wilbur. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.